This helpful shopping guide is brought to you by our friends over at Squarespace. What is going on, hybrid shooters? It's Jason Vong, and welcome to the ultimate buying guide for full frame Sony Alpha mirrorless cameras. Today, we'll be talking about several different cameras the A72, the A7R2, the A7S2, the A9, the A7R3, and the A7 III. That is a hell of a lot of cameras to go through. I'm not gonna try to go into too much details about this camera. Rather, I'll just go over what you need to know to help you make the best decision as to which camera to get. And apparently that one camera guy uploaded a very similar video. Man, I hate that guy. Nah, I'm just messing. Danny and I are good, but if you need a second opinion as to which cam to get, go ahead and check out his video right up here. But of course, finish watching this video first before you go, because my video is better. Okay, just to reiterate, this guide is just on full frame cameras. Sorry, we don't have enough time to touch up on APS-C bodies. And what you're gonna notice in this video is that a lot of the features overlap. That's because uh, each of these cameras are an upgrade from the previous ones. What remains to be consistent is that all of them have in-body image stabilization, a headphone jack and a mic jack, which are all uber important for video shooting. But don't worry, we'll dive into each of the specific features and how they benefit certain photographers and certain videographers. Oh, and one more thing. If you're buying any of these cameras during the holiday sale from an authorized retailer, you also get a complimentary three months of Adobe Creative Cloud photography plan. So you're getting a subscription, a three month subscription of uh, photo uh, Photoshop and Lightroom for free. And just really quickly, if you are a student, make sure you sign up for the EDU discount. You get possibly up to 10% off. I'm not too sure if that was stacked with the current discount right now because I'm not a student, but go ahead and check with B&H and Adorama. And let me know in the comments down below if the EDU discount will get honored with these current um, holiday sale as well. So first off, we have the A72 for $898 body only. For $100 more, you get a 20 to 75 kit lens with it. In my opinion, this camera is better suited just for photography only, and we'll get into reasons why that is in just a bit. But $900 to about $1,000, it's a great price for a full frame camera, especially to anybody who's looking to get into the full frame game on a budget. First off, this camera has in-body image stabilization. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe the A7 II was the first full frame camera to have in-body image stabilization built into the camera. So here's what that means. I don't have an A7 II personally, so I'm gonna demonstrate with the A7 III. How in-body image stabilization helps is if you are hand holding the camera trying to take the shot and you're shooting at a slower shutter speed, it'll still be able to get a clear sharp shot of your photo. The stabilization is also very helpful for whenever you're hand holding to get the shot and you don't have a tripod or a monopod. And seriously, in-body image stabilization is a game changing feature in all of these full frame cameras. And what's cool is that this feature got carried over to future generations of the Sony Alpha cameras. So I won't be repeating myself too much when it comes to introducing the other cameras having full, um, having in-body image stabilization. The A7 II has fast hybrid autofocus, which uses phase detection autofocus and contrast detection autofocus to achieve focus really quickly. The camera also has 117 autofocus points. Now it may seem like I'm just throwing a number at you, but we're gonna be talking about why that is important later when we talk about the other cameras. For now, what you need to know is that that's just a small focus area that your camera seeks focus within. The A7 II has face detection autofocus. That means if it detects a face on the screen, it will latch focus onto it. It's also capable of eye detection autofocus. That means if it detects an eye on the screen, it'll focus on the eye. However, the eye autofocus technology is outdated on the A7 II because cameras after that are capable of continuous eye autofocus. That means whenever I, let's say I move around, the eye autofocus will track me. But on the A7 II, once you get the eye autofocus, if I move around, that focus is gonna stay where it grabbed focus on. Hopefully that makes sense. Even though it is outdated on the A7 II, if you're working with static models or a friend or a family that's just gonna be posing still, eye autofocus on the A7 II will work just fine. 
For continuous shooting, the A7 II is only capable of 5 frames per second, so not very stellar when it comes to fast moving objects. So let's just say if you have kids that are active in sports, or if you're active in sports and you just want to shoot a teammate, maybe kicking a ball or shooting some hoops, this camera may not be it for you. Again, it's more for things that are a bit slower paced or more for static objects or subjects. In my opinion, if you are a still life photographer or if you want to get into portrait photography, model photography, family photography, a little bit of street photography, architecture photography, even landscape, the a7 II will be a great camera for you. Now, if you were looking to shoot videos with the a7 II, I would push you into a different direction. Now, there's nothing wrong with the a7 II. It shoots up to 1080p, full HD, 60 frames per second, but the market right now has something that's a lot better and cheaper for videos. Plus, those newer cameras can shoot in 4K up to 30 frames per second. For the same price, I would push you more towards the a6500 instead. That one is capable of shooting 4K up to 30 frames per second, 1080p up to 120 frames per second, and the video autofocus is much better on the a6500. It also has S-Log2 and S-Log3, two flat color picture profile that you can use for cinematic grading. Whoops, I mentioned that I wouldn't be talking about an APS-C camera, but I guess I just did. That would be the only time I would suggest an APS-C camera over a full frame camera if we're talking about doing videos between the a7 II and the a6500. All right, moving on. Moving on to the Sony a7R II, and I'm very excited to talk about this one just because this is my first Sony camera ever, and it has my full seal of approval. This one for the holiday is going for about $1,598, which is a heck of a deal for this camera. I understand it is significantly more expensive than the a7 II right now, almost a $700 difference. This, in my opinion, is the best hybrid full frame camera that you can get on a budget because you'll be future proofing yourself if you get the a7R II. It's capable of 42 megapixel photos and 4K videos. This is a massive upgrade over the a7 II. In addition to having in-body image stabilization, fast hybrid autofocus, and five frames per second, you're shooting 42 megapixel photos. Now 42 megapixel is pretty insane, so you better have the hard drive space ready for the a7R II. But there's a lot of benefits when you're shooting 42 megapixels, one of which is cropping. If you crop heavily before, you're gonna notice that your quality of the photo, the resolution of the photo will degrade. You're gonna notice the photo is not as sharp. It's a little bit more pixely, but with the 42 megapixel, you have much more room to work with. You can crop in without losing too much details. The second advantage is heavy post-processing. There'll be a lot more pixels for you to sample off of when you're doing any sort of heavy alterations like blemish control. And this has 399 face detection autofocus points, more than double what the a7 II has. That just means there are more autofocus points on the screen, a larger autofocus area for your camera to see focus within. The a7R II is capable of continuous eye autofocus as opposed to the a7 II. That means if your model is moving around or your kids are moving around a lot on the screen, the eye autofocus will continually track their eyes to ensure you get a clear, sharp shot of them. The a7R II has a huge bump in the video department. You can shoot in full frame and crop frame 4K up to 30 frames per second. In fact, if you shoot 4K in Super 35 mode, you get slightly better quality because the camera will be shooting in 5K in a 4K composition, giving you a little more details in your videos. In terms of HD option, you still have 1080p up to 60 frames per second, and you can do 120 frames per second, but only in 720p. And the a7R II has S-Log2 for you cinematic shooters out there. So my recommendation for the a7R II applies to the same group of photographers. Portrait photographers, family photographers, landscape and architect photographers. Yes, 42 megapixel may sound like an overkill, but there's just so many times that I'm so glad that I have those extra megapixels to work with. But even casual shooters will find the a7R II much more beneficial with that continuous eye autofocus and the 399 autofocus points. And I would highly recommend this for video shooters as well. The video autofocus on this camera is superb. So if you're using it to vlog with, the face detection autofocus will work great. Or if you put this on a gimbal to do any sort of tracking shot, the a7R II is fantastic for that as well. Before we move on to the other cameras, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our friends over at Squarespace. I'm sure you've heard by now, Squarespace is the all-in-one solution for anybody looking to create a beautiful website without the pain and hassle of knowing any coding. 
like me. I personally use Squarespace to house my portfolio work that I can quickly send off to potential clients where they can see all of my most recent wedding films and my best of the best photos. With Squarespace easy to use interface, creating a portfolio is as simple as click and drag. Just ask Vivian, she did this for me actually. You can choose from their many clean templates to get started. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial and see how easy it is to set up your website. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Jason Vong to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to our regular programming. Okay, moving on to the A7R2's counterpart, the A7S II. And I'm just gonna come right out and say, I do not recommend this camera. Not because it's a terrible camera or anything, it's a terrific camera. Unfortunately for the price it is right now and what's about to come out, I would not recommend picking up the A7S II. On the internet, there are a lot of people waiting for the A7S III, which is rumored to come out early 2019. So I would suggest to wait for that. However, if you need something right now, I would suggest getting the A7 III. The A7 III has very similar low light performance to the A7S II, plus it has a lot of features that, in my opinion, are better than the A7S II. But if you still want me to talk about the A7S II, you can keep on watching. If not, click on this time code right here to skip to the A7 III. All right, well, I gave you a chance to skip, but if you really want to hear me talk about the A7S II, here we go, let's do it. So in my opinion, the A7S II is more of a video camera. It's very popular amongst the filmmakers. It's a camera that I use quite often back when I worked for a production company a few years ago, and we used it a lot during our um, early career in wedding filmmaking. It is a 12 megapixel camera, which is half of the A7 II, but the reason for the low megapixel is because it really gives the, it, it gives that ability for the A7S II to have that crazy low light sensor, which Sony is famously known for. And there's two things that Sony cameras are famously known for, is their autofocus and their insane low light capability. Unfortunately, this camera only uses one autofocus system and that's contrast only. There's no phase detection in the A7S II. So when you're shooting photos or when you're shooting videos, the autofocus is just not on par. It's not how it is with the A7R2 or the future three series cameras. Again, it's more so of a video camera. And again, it's popular amongst filmmakers and cinematographers is because they're very used to um, manually focusing with their lens. And a lot of people love adapting uh, Canon lenses or cinema lenses on the A7S II just to use it for its low light capability. Plus the A7S II is capable of 4K up to 30 frames per second, but it can shoot 120 frames per second in 1080p, albeit it crops in. And another reason why cinematographers and filmmakers like to use the A7S II is because it has S-Log3, which introduced uh, a new color science to the alpha cameras, and it's slightly better over the S-Log2 in terms of color reproduction. Or so I've heard, I'm not too quite sure about that. Again, if you have your eyes on the A7S II, I would honestly, at this point, either wait for the A7S III to see what it has to offer, or move on to the A7 III, which we'll talk about right now. All right, moving on to the A7 III, the best hybrid camera that you can get on the market right now. Unfortunately, the A7 III does not have any discount this Black Friday. It still has its $2,000 price tag, which is still not a bad price for what it has to offer. This camera compared to the A7 II, a lot has improved. Of course, it's still a 24 megapixel camera, but it has a new processor built into the camera that will write the photos in much quicker. This next bit here is shocking. It has 693 autofocus points. So you remember how I talk about the A7 II having only 117 autofocus points, and that's considered a very small area of autofocus? Well, the A7 III has 693 autofocus points. That means it has autofocus points spread out across the screen. So let's say if you're shooting with the A7 III, you got focus on the subject right here in the middle of the screen, but they move too far to the edge, the camera will still be able to hold focus on your subject. As opposed to the A7 II, if you're grabbing focus on a subject right in the middle, but they move too far to the edge of the screen, the camera is gonna lose focus on that subject. So hopefully that gives you a better insight as to why having more autofocus points can be super beneficial. And of course, the A7 III is capable of continuous eye autofocus. On top of that, you can now shoot 10 frames per second now, as opposed to five frames per second, thanks to the new processor inside the A7 III. 
So if you're shooting some pretty action-y stuff or your kid's playing sport, the a7 III is a better camera to get. And I'm not done here. The a7 III is now rocking a brand new bigger battery called the FZ100 battery, which is significantly better than these small little batteries here that you would have to use with the two series camera. This bigger battery here will allow you to shoot photos all day and up to two to two and a half hours of 4K movie recording. With the a7R 2 you'll probably have to bring at least a couple of extra batteries and even more than that if you're shooting 4K videos. The bigger battery alone has what gotten me to switch out of my 2 series camera. These things are seriously awesome. With the 2 series camera I have to constantly find chargers, find plugs to charge my batteries at weddings. Whereas the bigger batteries, I don't bring battery chargers anymore. I bring about 4 to 5 batteries and they will last me the entire day. Plus, changing focus on the a7 III is a lot easier now thanks to the joystick. And this thing here will be super important to a lot of professionals out there. Dual SD card slots. If you're making a lot of money doing a huge client project or you're shooting weddings, anything that's once in a lifetime, having dual recording, having dual SD card slots with redundant recording can save your life. I mean your career, but they're both the same thing. And video, the camera is capable of shooting 4K up to 30 frames per second. But if you're shooting in full frame, what the camera will actually do is it's going to shoot in 6K, but it's going to downsample to a 4K composition. So you're going to be getting super crispy detail in your videos. And if you want to do slow motion on the a7 III, you'll be glad to know that it'll be able to do a 1080p up to 120 frames per second with no cropping. Just to emphasize that point even further, the a7S II crops when you're shooting 120 frames per second in 1080p, and the a7R II can only shoot 120 frames per second in 720p only. So yes, that's a big deal. And the a7 III can shoot an S-Log2, 3, and this new picture profile called Hybrid Log Gamma. That's why earlier when I say if you're planning on getting the a7S II, forget about it. Go straight for the a7 III because you still have all those amazing features that you would find on the S2 in the 3 right here. And if you're worried about low light, there are some tests out there that actually says the a7 III has very comparable ISO performance in low light um, when, you, when you compare it to the a7S II. The a7S II still slightly wins, but unless you're shooting in pitch darkness, the a7 III will still do a pretty bang up job. So the a7 III will be great for a lot of different types of photographers and videographers out there. Portrait photographers, landscape photographers, even event photographers will really love the a7 III just because of the 10 frames per second and better autofocus. For videographers, filmmakers, and cinematographers, they will enjoy using this camera as it has a lot of very similar features of the a7S II, but of course getting a slightly better quality bump in 4K and in 1080p. All right, moving on to the a7R 3 This will be a very hard camera to pitch, but I'll do my best anyway. This is actually my favorite hybrid camera out of all the ones that I've talked about. And I'll have to make another video talking about why that is. But for now, just think of the a7R 3 having very, very similar features uh, of the a7 III. The only difference would be um, that it is an R series camera, so it's capable of shooting 42 megapixels. Now, I already talked about the benefits of shooting 42 megapixels already. You can go ahead and rewind here if you want to listen to the reasons again. This has 399 autofocus points, about 300 points less than the a7 III. However, um, I never felt the a7R 3 was slow at grabbing focus. If anything, um, the rate at which both of these cameras grab focus are very, very similar. The a7R 3 always have done a good job um, grabbing focus. So there's nothing wrong with having less autofocus points. Um, if anything, the a7 III might perform slightly better, but for the most part, it's really hard to tell between the two. Couple of other small things. The LCD screen here is uh, a little brighter over the a7 III. It has a higher resolution compared to the a7 III. And it actually has a very unique feature of its own. It's called pixel shift. So if you're shooting architecture or I guess maybe landscape, I think no, only architecture. If you're shooting a lot of architecture, um, this camera would do a, a really good job. Unfortunately, I don't do too much of that. I can't really um, show you any good samples, but just know that if you are an architectural photographer and you really want to have that 42 megapixel camera, this camera would, will have a feature that might help you out a lot. 
Oh, right, and the price. So for this holiday season, it's about $400 off. You can get this camera for about $2,800, which isn't bad at all. Again, if you're looking for something that's um, more well-rounded for a better price, the a7 III is really, really hard to beat. Whew. All right, finally, for the last camera, the Sony A9, the creme de la creme, the flagship full-frame camera from Sony. Right now, you can get it for $1,000 off. The original price is $4,500, but you can now get it for $3,500. And let me just tell you, the A9 is an absolute insane of a camera. If you're a sports photographer, you're an event photographer, especially weddings, or you're shooting cars, you're shooting planes, you're shooting Superman, this is the camera to get. It is a 24 megapixel camera. It has 693 autofocus points, but it is capable of shooting 20 frames per second, no blackout with anti-distortion. That is absolutely bonkers for a camera like this. That means if you're shooting 20 frames per second and you can shoot 20 frames silently too, you're not gonna get a blackout screen. You won't see black at all. You'll be able to track your subject as they go by without any interruptions. That means if you go out to shoot Tiger Woods and he's swinging his club, it's called club, right? Cause I don't, I don't play golf, so I'm not too sure. But when he swings his club, you're not gonna be distracting him. You're not getting that horrible warping of his club. You're gonna get a perfectly good shot. How insane is that? Now, I personally have used it to shoot concerts and to shoot this air show right here. And I'm already just like, wow, this is like cheating. I am getting these amazing shots that is in tack sharp focus with the Sony A9. That's something that I don't think I can really get with the A7R3 or the A7 III. The A9 is truly an amazing piece of tech for photography and you owe it to yourself to get one. Again, if you are a sports photographer, events photographer, they seriously market this camera for sports shooters and wildlife too. Anything that requires any sort of high speed action, fast pace, get the A9. Now you might be wondering, well, Jason, if the A9 is such an amazing piece of camera, how come, how come you don't own it? How come you don't own this camera? Well, I'll tell you, I would love to own the A9. Unfortunately, it does have an Achilles heel. No picture profiles, which a lot of people complain about. It's a flagship model, no picture profile. I mean, I get it. It's not marketed as a video camera. It's, a, it's marketed as an insane photography camera. With that said, it's still capable of shooting 4K up to 30 frames per second, 1080p up to 120 frames per second, great autofocus, all that good jazz. If it had picture profile, I would have been fine to drop $4,500 for that camera. Unfortunately, nowadays I shoot a lot with hybrid log gamma, which is one of the picture profiles that could be found in the newer three series camera. So if it had that, of course, of course I would get the A9. That would be the ultimate, ultimate hybrid shooting camera like Ever. So hopefully the A9 Mark II will have picture profiles. But until then, I'm very satisfied with renting out the A9 for whenever I need that 20 frames per second. Cause seriously, that 20 frames per second, no joke, no joke at all. 20 frames, oh my God, 20 frames per second, Jesus. Whew, sorry, got a little carry away right there. Undoubtedly, I know I'll be getting a lot of lens questions. So I'll tell you what, um, hopefully in the next day or two, I will have an ultimate buying guide for full frame lenses for Sony Alpha cameras or somewhere along that line. Should be coming out a few days after this video. But in terms of the best accessories to get for your Sony camera, like memory cards, batteries, and straps, camera straps, because camera straps are important, check the description box below. If I try to detail every single one of them, it's just gonna take another 15 minutes. So check the description box below. I promise you they're the best that you can get for these cameras. Aside from that, if you are new to Sony, let me know which camera you'll be picking up after watching this video. And if you already own a bunch of Sony, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of Sony cameras, let me know what you think of my recommendations. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.